Oyster Bay Today invites you to see what's brewing at Necromantic Brew Company in Farmingdale. Come with me. It's not scary. I'm Councilman Lou and Brodo. We're here in Farmingdale with Ralph at Necromantic Brew Co. to learn a little bit about the brewery and the horror theme that they have going on here. Ralph, where'd the name Necromantic come from? It's a good question. So our grains, they're over 5,000 years old. So they're called the ancient grains. So we wanted to have some sort of a, a spooky a connotation. So we thought about necromancy, which is of course, you know, rising from the dead, the ashes. So I said, well, you know, necromancy brewery just didn't have a ring to it. So when we were talking about it, we landed on necromantic, which is a version of that. And then we figured we'd make our own uh, definition. So Necromantic Brew Co. conjures delicious tasting, all natural, gluten-free craft beer by harnessing the power of the ancient grains. So the theme here is definitely about horror, horror movies, you have horror memorabilia everywhere. Could you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, certainly. So uh, we took over this lease in 2020 and obviously with COVID and you know sometimes you get delays and such so we had time to go to different horror conventions, meet different you know, horror actors, actresses, and of course pick up memorabilia from these places. So um, that's exactly what we wound up doing. So a lot of the things are signed. You know, we've got a shadow box uh, with a machete and a Friday the 13th uh, Jason Voorhees mask signed by three Jasons. And you often have horror movies being shown in the bar. I see we've got Harry Potter today. Today's Harry Potter day. It's gonna go well into the night. Um, we have movie marathons depending upon the time of the year, the month, the theme. We do paint night once a month. We do trivia once a month, which is a fantastic event. You know, we just started karaoke, which we call Scaryoke. That'll be on Thursdays. And then the movie marathons. Every Tuesday, I put up a 120-inch projector screen, and we've got a projector behind us that's mounted. Uh, so every Tuesday night from 7 till close, we put on a double feature horror film. And then the month itself has its own theme. So here in Farmingdale, we have a little bit of a restaurant row, and it's starting to turn into a brewer's row. Why did you choose to be in Farmingdale and in the town of Oyster Bay? So for me, it was a very easy decision. You know, this was the first place that I looked at. Of course, being on Main Street, there's a select amount of properties that, uh, that you can choose from. But I grew up here. Uh, I went to North Side down the block. So you're a local guy with deep roots in the Farmingdale community and generations of businesses right here in Farmingdale. Love it. I just love it here. And then what they've done over the last past years, to your point before about, you know, lithology being here. And of course, they sublet to Jones Beach. So technically, they're like a two for one brewery. And then with us here making it three, you know, it's easy to just pass business back and forth to one another. So, you know, once they found out that we were going to be here, it was uh, really great. It was very welcoming, very warm. And if you love beer, there's no place is better to be than Farmingdale, where almost every bar here has a large selection of craft beers. Speaking of beer, why don't you tell me about some of the beers they have in front of us here? Absolutely. So number six here, in honor of the Harry Potter Day, we brewed a cream ale. So we called this one the beer that shall not be named. So it's a uh, butterscotch cream ale. Then we've got uh, number one over there. So that's Blood Vessel. Blood Vessel is a porter, but it's a cherry porter. So that one's kind of delicious if you like cherries. Number seven is our second pumpkin that we had for the season. So that one's our tart pumpkin with a sugar rim on it. And number five is another holiday themed beer that we did called Sour Elf. So it's a goza that has got uh, cranberry juice, orange zest, and lime hops. So it's almost Very like a cool. sour Cosmo. So we're back here in the brew room at Necromantic Brewery with Ralph, who's gonna tell us a little bit about the brewing process. Ralph, how do you make your beer? Makes Lou, so for Necromantic, what we do is we have basically no wheat, no rye, no barley, and those are basic ingredients in making any beer. However, here at Necromantic, we are gluten-free. So we use millet, we use buckwheat, we use flake, quinoa, and roasted rice. So our process is uh, very similar to other breweries in the sense of we have a mash tun behind us and a boil kettle and with those we do uh, 325 pounds of milled grain. We let that soak and uh, secrete those uh, enzymes from starches to sugars and then we get the sugar water which they call wort and shoot it into our boil kettle. We boil it at 212 degrees 
That's where we add hops, fruits, additives, whatever we want to make it stylistically, flavor-wise. And then after an hour boil, we use this pretty large uh, red hose that goes from the system to the fermenters. You'll know they're fermenters because they are conical shape. So this way when the yeast goes in the top and it starts eating all the sugars and turning it into beer, we use uh, these chillers here and the, the coldness of the uh, temperature lets all the yeast and all the particles drop out. So this way when we get it into our bright tank, which is in the last tank over here, that's when you get clean product. So we don't use any filtration or anything like that. It's just naturally chilled. So you're the only gluten-free uh, brewery that I'm aware of. Why are you gluten-free? Could you tell me a little bit about that? Sure. So we're the only one in the state of New York and we get our grains from the only place right now that you can get uh, certified dedicated gluten-free grains at, uh, which is a Grouse Malt House, Wilmington, Colorado. So they actually have a dedicated facility in the middle of nowhere so there's no cross-contamination from winds and, and wheat farms or anything else and that's where we get our grains from. The reason that we're gluten-free is because I have celiac so I am sensitive um, or allergic to you know uh, any type of wheat, rye, barley and the like. So all of our grains come from grouse and uh, we even use uh, corn sometimes because that's uh, also gluten free. So anyone with celiac disease, anyone with a gluten allergy or gluten sensitivity generally can't drink beer, but they'd be right at home here at Necromantic, right? Right. So the grains are all gluten free, the beers are naturally gluten free, and we even have gluten free snacks. So the facility is basically the first dedicated gluten free facility in the state. How long does each of those beers usually take to make? So basically a brew day could be anywhere between eight and 12 hours, which is pretty much standard for, you know, whatever you're brewing. Um, we're maybe an extra hour longer on the mash than most breweries are. But other than that, everything, you know, as long as it goes according to plan, sometimes you can get a stuck mash and that's going to make it, you know, a little bit longer. Uh, but other than that, it's pretty much the same. And then as far as getting the beer from the tank to the table, so to speak, you know, you're looking at anywhere between a week and a half to two weeks. But of course, if you want something a little more complex, you know, a little more flavoring, you kind of want it to mellow out a little bit, could be three, four weeks. A lager wants to lager. That's a 30 day process generally. So yeah, it's about average. I can see the amount of passion that you have for brewing. How did you get involved in this in the first place? Well, my best friend, uh, he would used to come to my house and we would have drinks and watch horror movies. So I would have, you know, basically hard liquor and he would come over with a craft beer four pack and, you know, he would basically be able to finish the movie and I'd be passed out in, a, in an hour. So when we started to brew together, you know, it was basically an idea that came to pass when they said, Bas how are you, you going to drink beer? And I said, I can't drink beer. And he says, well, let me see if we can buy beer. So the gluten-free beer that's commercially sold, you know, we had found at the time was not very good. It was very tinny and metallic-y. And so because of that, we decided, well, you know, maybe we can make our own and have some better success. So in my Four Seasons room, uh, which is well ventilated, you know, we would put up a dollar store uh, shower curtain projector and watch movies and brew and, you know, basically watch a couple of different movies while the beer's brewing and stuff like that, hang out. And that's kind of where the whole premise of this place, you know, comes from was, you know, watching movies and, and brewing beer. And because I'm celiac and I can't just go out and buy beer, that is what really sparked us making beer. Because honestly, there's so many breweries and so many great ones um, on, on the island and in the state that it, you know, I don't know that I could add that much to that side of the industry, you know, but being on this side of the industry, you know, where it's not being done and, and that we're able to make it so close uh, to, you know, regular tasting beer, that's the exciting part for me is, you know, playing around like a chef. So whether you love craft beer, horror movies, or you need to drink gluten-free, come down to Necromantic Brewery in Farmingdale. I'm Councilman Lou Brodo, and this is Oyster Bay Today. Cheers. Delicious craft beer that harnesses the power of ancient grains at Necromantic Brew Company, 253 Main Street in Farmingdale. You see? I told you it's not scary.